having a baby is a major life event and because of that women deserve the right to make good, informed, safe choices. We really believe that we have an opportunity here to deliver safe, evidence-based maternity services where women have good experiences, empowering women in a way to make the right choices for them. We need to change the narrative, we need to revisit how we communicate, we need to examine and explore our misconceptions so that we can truly give factual, evidence-based information to women to enable them to make a truly informed choice, and in particular, choice of place of birth. Maternity transformation is important for me personally because I'm a midwife and I absolutely believe that every midwife wants women to have the very, very best maternity care, which I absolutely know that midwives can deliver. And that requires us as a Royal College to really help midwives to think about how they do that. What we're trying to achieve um, for all women who use maternity services in England is personalised, safe care. The evidence tells us, particularly from the information collated as a result of the National Maternity Review, that evidence tells us that women are not receiving information to enable them to make a choice about place of birth. The statistics tell us less than 50% of women are given information to make truly informed choices. And other data tells us 16% of women were not offered a choice of place of birth and less than 33% of women were only offered one choice. So this video is to support you to really rethink your communication, to rethink the information that you share with women. We really want you to rethink some of your biases, misconceptions, and be able to articulate clearly why place of birth is important and the options for where women can give birth. Katie, do you want to lie back for me on the bed? Yeah, please. Thank, Thank you, you so to keep much. My shoes on. Yeah, absolutely. Katie is a 30 year old um, primate, which means she's having her first baby, and she is roughly 20 weeks pregnant, um, coming in for a routine where antenatal check. The top of your tummy is, that's your phone. Because Katie's a healthy young woman, um, she has the options to deliver wherever she'd like. Regardless of, of whatever background she is from, medically or obstetrically, we would be able to support her in whatever choice that she would like to make. And here as well. We have three options we have having a home birth having a hospital birth in an obstetric unit or having birth in a midwifery led unit. Really important decisions to be made and you are the gatekeepers of that vital information that belongs to women and not to midwives. Excellent. All sounds perfect today. Offering women a full range of choices as to where to have their baby is a key recommendation of um, the Better Births Maternity Service policy. We know from the evidence that many, many, many women are not being offered the full range of choices, in particular choices of having the baby at home or having their babies in freestanding units. In the CQC survey in 2017, only 38% of women in England were offered an option of having a home birth. I'm really keen for a home birth, but he's really not into it at all. He's oh. really worried. He said, with our first, it's probably not safe. And he was like, with the second and third, which I won't even think about yet. Right. He, he was like, maybe with those, but not with our first. OK. What is he fearful of, Katie? He's just scared that we're going to have to go in an ambulance and what if something goes wrong. Right. You don't think it would help if I spoke to Sam? I'm going to bring him to the next appointment. Perfect. But I, I don't think there's any convincing him. Good. I think that would be really helpful. I don't want to push either of you either way. Um, I just want to make sure that you both know all the information, OK? Um, so One of the things I'd really want to happen is for midwives to be mindful of facilitating conversations with women about the choices that they have throughout their maternity journey. And being able to do that is, is, a, is important in a way that women understand.
So it's about helping women understand the choices they have, the evidence behind those choices, and then maybe to help them weigh up the risks and benefits when they are starting to think about those choices for themselves. So we know that statistically, the transfer rate for women who have a home birth is 45%. There is a lot of evidence um, around um, women who want or are thinking about having their babies in at home or in freestanding units receive a lot of negativity from healthcare professionals. So I love the positivity that um, Leila emanated. Obviously you're slightly more keen on the home birth. If he's not keen, I really want you both to be comfortable in this situation. Mm -hmm. So maybe the meeting point in the middle might be a freestanding um, midwifery led unit. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between the two. Right, we've got Edgware Birth Centre and we've got Barnet Birth Centre. So at Edgware, it's a freestanding unit, it's midwifery-led care throughout, it's absolutely beautiful, it's seven miles away from the hospital, mm -hmm. it's, it's still a slightly clinical setting but it's more home environment. Then we have Barnet Birth Centre and our Barnet Birth Centre is an alongside midwifery-led unit which again is led by midwives at Barnet um, but if there was a problem it's a simple case of transferring you downstairs to the labour ward so it's in the same building as our obstetric-led unit. Right. Okay. Now if you have a look at this this um, this tool that I showed you at booking, yeah. over here it will tell you the outcomes. Okay. So statistically, like I said, the home birth transfer rate is 45%. Mm -hmm. You go to a, f a freestanding midwifery free lead unit which is edgeware that drops down to 36 percent okay. so actually you can see the difference yeah right and then if you want an alongside unit then it's a 40 percent transfer rate okay okay so, so lesser edgeware exactly so lesser edgeware so it might be the perfect middle point for you and sam where you'd both feel comfortable for this delivery yeah okay so definitely have a think about it the so really important thing about birth that birth conversation birth. is listening to the woman about her thoughts and her values and so that the midwife can help her explore risks and benefits of the choices and also give her the information about the choices that are available once the woman has made a choice, it's really important the midwife is then an advocate for her choice and to support her to get what is right for her. Whatever you guys choose, we'd absolutely um, support you in whatever you guys want, okay? I just want you guys to both be on the same page. It very much reflects government policy recommendations, which recommends that all women should be offered a full range of choices as well as the unbiased information to enable them to make a choice around where they want to have their baby. So I loved it from that perspective. When you as midwives enter into that really important dialogue with women to enable them to make informed choices, we're doing many things as midwives. We're empowering women to make choices. And um, that communication is key in supporting the woman to be empowered, to mull over choices, make decisions and therefore have a good maternity experience. Angie is coming to see me today. She is a 40 year old para two, so she's her third baby. She's 25 weeks pregnant and today we're going to have a discussion about place of birth. When you're actually having a choice conversation with women and their families, what really is important is to offer them all of the options. Don't make judgments about what you think is important for them. Listen, ask them what is important for them. Give them the opportunity to have a conversation around their experiences, what their fears, their concerns are. Going for your notes, I know that uh, this is your third baby and what are you thinking about in terms of place of birth? I thought about a home birth mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to discuss that again with my partner but having two small children, and my son's two and my daughter's three, I'm concerned that if it's in the day, mm -hmm. um, I don't really want them around. So is it a thing about childcare that you're worried about? Childcare. 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 Really? So it's easier, really, if I could go to the birthing centre, arrange childcare for them, have the baby, and then come home. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the, the choices that are available to you. So you, you've mentioned about a home birth. So with a home birth, you know, you're in your own environment, you're more relaxed, you have access to your own toilets, your own environment, you know, your own kitchen, you can you can walk around your home and be more relaxed basically because it's your own environment. That definitely does appeal to me. It's just the children factor. Mm. Um, There's also the option of having, uh, of giving birth in a standalone birth unit. So for us that would be the Edgeware Birthing Centre. Have you heard about that? 
I have thought about edgeware. Um, my concern with it, though, is that if I felt like I needed an epidural, mm -hmm. um, I, ideally I wouldn't like to be transferred. I'd ha I know I'd have to then go to hospital. So that's, that kind of puts me off a little bit, thinking about edgeware. Really, there should be very little we need to say, only just provide them with the evidence and let them internalise that evidence in relation to their own needs and personalise it for themselves and their families. You know, they'll, they'll make the right decisions for themselves. We've also found that um, when, once the women know their midwives and uh, they're very familiar with the midwives and they've had the same midwife throughout their antenatal care, the rates of transfer and requests for epidurals are also really low. So this it would be the midwife that I would have had before. That's, that's, nice. that's really good to know, better. actually, that's really reassuring. Yeah. One of the recommendations of Better Births is to provide continuity of carer for women and their families. And that means that when you have that continuity and there is that relationship that develops, the woman will be even more empowered because she'll have that trusting um, mutual respect uh, between a woman and a midwife to enable her to feel able to ask questions, able to mull over the responses that she receives and then ultimately make good informed choices supported by continuity of carer. Giving birth in the barn. When Cheryl started talking about that um, Angie would get continuity of care and would know her midwife, you could see Angie's face change. She was thinking, oh my God, you know, maybe that's a really important trade-off for her. And knowing she, you know, knowing her midwife might, you know, make her feel that 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 might be the best okay, option Angie, for so, her. Um, I've gone through all the choices of places of birth. So are you happy with what I've just gone through? Is there any questions that you'd like to ask? No, actually I feel quite reassured and I feel like it, it's opened up my options and my choices now and, and now I'm aware of what, what's available, I'm going to go home and have another conversation with my partner and, and see which one we think would be the best fit for us. A midwife being able to sit down with a woman and understand you know, what, what she's already thinking about her place of birth is a really important conversation to have during pregnancy. You can't just do that once, you have to do that several times so you get to the point that the mother is making a confident choice for her place of birth and of course understands the risk and benefits of that choice. If it's a planned cesarean section we do something called enhanced recovery programme so if you and the baby are well um, we can get you home within 24 hours as long as there's no other complications so that means that you're less in hospital and we know that does reduce the risk of infection and things like that if you're able to get home a bit sooner but that still doesn't take away from the fact that you'll have a bit to recover afterwards mm, yeah. and you've got a daughter and then a son as well to look after so yeah. that's a little bit more difficult sometimes to to manage. So what really matters to women and um, is that they have the evidence so and our role as health professionals is to give them the evidence but as Joan did in this situation to give them the evidence and present it in a meaningful way. Love the way Joan said no pressure my role here is just to give you the evidence. If you've got no other questions, then what I'm going to do is um, give you an information leaflet that we've produced for the hospital that really just summarises what I've just told you, so you could go away and have a look at the information again. And there's also, apart from the leaflet that we produce, um, NHS Choices, which gives you lots of information, not only for you, but any woman who's planning mm -hmm. to have a baby and about where to give birth to your baby. One of the other things that really came out in that conversation was that Joan was giving the couple lots of other very important sources. We know from the evidence about 50% of women will um, follow up the conversation by looking at the internet and research. So really love that Joan pointed out you know, very good sources of information to help them make their choices. NHS England have developed a uh, maternity decision toolkit and that's been supported by uh, the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology and the Royal College of Midwives and indeed we have support from NICE regarding this fantastic tool. The tool is in two forms. Uh, there's a tool for women who have had a baby before and there is a maternity decision tool for women who have never had a baby before and they're available on the NHS England website.
I know I've given you loads of information. So there's a leaflet here that um, has been devised. It wasn't available when we first booked you, but it's available now. So it's got all the information that I've told you about. It's, there's more. Um, there's more detail in. Um, in, in the leaflets and, and you'll find that when you do go for the leaflet that correct evidence does show that um, having your baby either at home or in the standalone unit is, is, is more beneficial to you and you're more likely to have a more um, successful delivery either at home or in a standalone unit Thank you very when much. you get home so you've got something to show him as well. It's really important that midwives seek support and help for the things they have to do differently. The way the Royal College of Midwives can help is uh, we've got iLearn modules that can help you. We often run articles and pieces in our magazine. There's information on our website. We do blogs. We're involved in workshops. We've even got a continuity of care again. The other thing you could do is ask one of our regional officers and they are very embedded and involved in the local maternity systems and they can help you to help yourselves to really embrace the changes in the maternity transformation programme so that we can all make it better. The other thing we're doing is supporting heads of midwifery who are leading change locally. They're also involved in the LMSs and we are making sure that we are a resource and support for them. So you're sort of weighing up, you know, 70, sort of 30 percent. So what we'd like for all maternity providers in England is for them to provide a platform for all women to have good communication with their midwives through relational continuity to empower them to take control, have personalised care, so that they really feel in charge of the decisions that they make, and in particular, can really feel informed about making decisions of place of birth. And that would be for all women across England, regardless of geography, socioeconomic status, regardless of ethnicity. The most important thing about learning and education is actually getting midwives to seek the information they need for themselves. So I would ask all of our members to go and find out how they can do it differently.